Okay, so in this video, I'm going to be talking about how to discern God's voice. And sometimes this could be quite difficult, even for myself, because sometimes I will just not hear God's voice at all. I can't even touch Christ. I can't even feel Christ. He's out of sight, out of mind. Now, what do I believe that is? I believe that's disobedience. Maybe I'm doing something out of line, out of whack. Maybe I stepped out of line and just didn't do one of his commandments and his presence left. Because when you're obedient, to God, you feel a warmth on your soul that is just indescribable, and God said he will make all of your paths straight, and there is a thing, you know, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, so God has a will for your life, and if he has a will for your life, he has a navigation to get to that will, and it's his voice, so yes, you can hear his voice. To wicked non-believers who are cursed and condemned, they would say, oh, this is schizophrenia, this is that this is that but their mind is plagued with confusion when you're in the kingdom of darkness your mind is confused you're lost you're scattered you're double-minded and have no clarity so when it comes to understanding god's voice it's easy when you're in a righteous home when you're in a righteous household or in a cleansed household and you're not around wicked people because god says what do the wicked and what do the righteous have in common absolutely nothing what does light and darkness have in common nothing besides confusion so it could be your surroundings that is causing you confusion because a person who is not of God they're of the devil and the devil's job is to steal kill destroy that's why these people just constantly spread doubt they're small-minded they're narrow-minded they only talk you down they never speak love they never speak life into you they never speak you up because they're of the devil they're just like their father the father of lies they're just like this world a big huge lie that's all this world is it lies it doesn't speak life it speaks death, it speaks slavery, it speaks all these things. Surroundings is very important because we live in a very weird age where some of the young children are the wisest. Like some young children are wiser than me. Like I seen this kid on Instagram just speaking gems, probably because he's not contaminated and ruined, but it was some like young black child. I don't know why I had to point out that he was black, but black people are just very bold and spiritual and stand firm on their beliefs. When it comes to wisdom, age alone alone doesn't make you wise, nor is it only old men who can understand what is right. We live in a backwards world where a majority of the kids are messed up because their parents are misguiding them. They're not setting the standard. They're not giving them something to look up to. And this is kind of going off topic, but this is spiritual warfare. A lot of these kids are just giving in to seducing spirits who are telling them what they should be, how they should act. And a lot of these families and these parents parents are pushing the beliefs of the world on their kids and that's why God said if you are a friend of this world you're an enemy to God because this world is under the control of the evil one the beliefs that are pushed by this world is meant for self-destruction enslavement spiritual death so if you are around people who are conformed to the patterns of this world God says do not be conformed to the patterns of this world because it's constantly wavering the truth is constantly changing there is no truth it's all lies because this world belongs to the father of lies so if you're around anybody who has conformed to the patterns of this world and they don't hold their own beliefs be cautious that's why there's so many destroyed families there's so many destroyed entities because they're not being transformed by the renewal of their mind by god whose truth was the same it was a thousand years ago to this day and every other day it's a rock foundation that never changes but if you're constantly adapting changing to this world it will destroy destroy your family it will destroy your identity it will leave you confused and that's what we're seeing on a grand scale these parents who are pushing the world's beliefs on their children their children are growing up confused not knowing what their identity is wanting to mutilate their bodies wanting to do all these grotesque things because they don't know their identity and their identities in god and this world will strip that away to where you will just be a wicked being leading to the pits of hell and this is spiritual you know people could do the same to me but i am rooted in god and i know who i am people could say you're this you're that but i know who i am in god and with that
rock foundation that this whole world is missing a lot of people are bound to crumble i mean we could just look at the united states for example it was founded on christianity i released the holy spirit upon his life for the holy spirit to strengthen him his spirit solemn body and father i release wisdom from heaven and i declare god that you use him to change the spiritual atmosphere of this nation father i give you the praise and i I give you the honor in Jesus mighty name. Amen. And it was rooted in God and it was one of the most powerful countries in the world. But now it's just crumbling inside. I don't care if you think I'm Satan reincarnated. It's crumbling from the inside out and you see what happens to a godless generation. You see what happens when you operate without God. So operating with God is very important and being able to discern that voice is very important because you have god's voice you have your voice and you have satan's voice and satan's voice is what the majority is listening to right now it says god is not the author of confusion but yet a lot of people who are without god are extremely confused they're destroyed and they're listening to the voice that says steal kill destroy whether it's themselves with deceiving lying thoughts that hold them in chains and bondage that feeds them doubt discouragement all those negative voices that could be rooted inside of your spirit from childhood whatever's hanging on to you whatever you're listening to is a lie from the enemy and the best way to be able to discern god's voice to hear god's voice is by spending time with God and his word. God said his word is living and breathing. So the more you spend time in his word, which is living and breathing, that is the word of God, which is alive. The more you spend time in there, which is his voice, the more you'll be able to recognize what is his voice, what is yours. Your voice is usually very ego driven. It's usually about idols. It's usually about something vain, making more money. You gotta get more views. You gotta get a good thumbnail. You gotta compete so I can look good. You gotta do this so I could be flashy. That's your voice where it's all about self. It's conceited. It's all about your own self will, what you want not God's will, your will, what satisfies your soul. And obviously you don't have the best answer of what can satisfy your soul, but God does because he created you. So you have three voices and we know that damn near this whole population in this world is listening to Satan, which is do whatever you want, have no limitations, have no restrictions, let your kids do whatever they want, let them mutilate their bodies, confuse them, have a dysfunctional household, invite whomever into your house, don't be conscious, don't have discernment date whomever just because she's attractive only chase money 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 but never help never actually give value to society lust follow your temptations follow your desires follow the earth's passions and lusts that's the devil and that is draining and when you want to follow god's voice sometimes you have to separate yourself entirely from people like that because a lot of people are comfortable in their brokenness a lot of people are comfortable and they're stagnant and they don't want to grow because they're not plugged into god a god of acceleration a god of growth a god of progress a god of flourishing a god of transformation they're not plugged into that they're plugged into the enemy which is stagnation which is generational curses which is being broken which is allowing generational curses allowing whomever in your house allowing whomever to walk over your feet allowing whomever to do you wrong no boundaries no limitations no none of this no none of that a lot of people are plugged into that and they don't know the light they don't know the hope because like this is a godless generation generation these people aren't operating on god back in the day everybody was about god everybody was about the lord everybody was about the church and that's when society was actually functioning and flourishing and it was proper and it wasn't falling apart that's when the states was boom strongest military strong president sure everything has issues because the enemy will always be a thorn into anything that is good but when you understand that there's a thorn and you don't tolerate it you you can actually combat it a lot of people allow that thorn to become a wedge and that wedge becomes a wall and that wall becomes a cage and that cage becomes spiritual death
Mm, that's powerful. But when it comes to discerning God's voice, you need to spend time in the word. No wonder this matrix, this society is so quick to throw a phone in your face so they can distract you, so they can lead the narrative. They don't want your instincts. They don't want your intuition. I don't like the word intuition because it sounds spiritual. They don't want that voice of God, that voice that is all knowing, very wise, to see what they are doing in this world. That's why they're so quick to throw a phone right in your face so you can just be plugged in. No wonder you can't hear God because you have all this garbage, all this junk roaming around in your face and in your ears all hours of the day. You have to put it down. By the way, at the back of the phone, they have a bit of an apple, which is how sin was introduced to the world. The logo for Apple computers is an apple with a bite out of it. To many occult insiders, this signifies the eating of the forbidden fruit, symbolically the apple, by Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden was a good thing. Occultists and New Agers teach that taking a bite out of the apple gave the first two humans knowledge or gnosis, putting them on the path to self-divinity and godhood. Interestingly, the price tag on the first personal computer from Apple was $666. And that's the fastest way to sin. And sin separates you from God. Sin is a wedge between you and God. You might not even be able to hear God because you're disconnected. You're separated because sins, which are so easily accessible on the phone, separate you from God. God says it's hard enough for a righteous person to get into heaven. So what about the sinners? Moses Moses went to the top of a mountain for 11 days to hear from God and he walked down the hill and he was glowing and you could see it on his face. So if you draw near to God, he will draw near to you, but you have to make an effort, a continual effort. Now this is my own opinion, this is not biblical, but it's just like if you have a friend, the relationship is good, you're treating him properly, he's treating you properly, you're doing the right things, you're not being a snake, you're not doing the wrong thing and you're continually having like a mutual good benefit where it's positive to you, it's positive to the other person and then one day the other person just does something that's disobedient or does something behind your back that is so against what you're about. So you draw yourself back from the situation and you stop reaching out to that person. So I feel like when it comes to God sometimes, it's a continual effort of you being obedient and when he says go, you go. When he says do this, you do that. When he says take this leap of faith, you take that leap of faith faith. And it's just tests of understanding, learning his voice. When you hear something that you think may be God, take that leap of faith, test it, try it out. And it's something you just continually build. God says, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. So if God is your shepherd, that means you have to get familiar with his word. Sheeps are obedient. The body of Christ is obedient. When they hear his word, they follow. So learn his word. Understand his word. Decipher the voices in your head. What's your own voice? What's Satan's voice? And what's God's voice? And the more you develop that relationship, the more trust you will build. It's like the moment you meet a person, the moment you meet a girl, and she continues to build your trust, and you build her trust the relationship gets better and better and better and you want to go out of your way to do more things and you're more obedient and you listen more it takes trials it takes tribulation to build that faith and just studying the word for the ear tests words just as the tongue tastes food so after a while it will become a lot easier to test the word for you to be like no that is satan get behind me that is my own selfish desires that is my own agenda that's what i want and this is god's will now to the world they'll be like oh that's schizophrenia and that's why you cannot be a friend of this world because this world is an enemy to god because everything this world does will just ruin your relationship with god god says don't show the wicked any favor for they will turn you away from following jehovah to serve other gods bad company ruins good morals don't be deceived you must not follow after other gods because jehovah requires exclusive devotion you must love jehovah your god with all your heart and all your soul and all your strength so a lot of the times, it could also be your actions as well. Doing what is righteous. Doing what God would want you to do. Building that relationship. It's about your actions. If you speak about God all the time, but your heart is far from God, and you're not doing what God would want you to do, if you're not acting out righteously, if you're not being just, if you're not confronting the injustice like God would want his righteous people to do, or being obedient and keeping all of his 
his commandments, that relationship could fizzle out. Many are called, but few are chosen. God could be calling you on the phone, but you have to pick up. You have to be obedient and you have to want to follow all of those commandments and be Christ-like. And the more he sees you making an effort, the more he sees you picking up your cross, the more he sees you trying, struggling, fighting the flesh, making an effort. Because some people don't make an effort at all. That's why they don't know God. That's why they're condemned. They're cursed. Their kids grow up to be a crackhead. One of them cuts off his dick while there's arguments in the household and Satan's just running rampant inside of that household and everything's just crazy, confused, destroyed. Listen, as parents, follow the Lord. Teach your kids about God and you will have a beautiful structure, a flourishing system. You will have faith that can move mountains. You will mount up with wings like an eagle. When you get weary, you have the Lord to take refuge. Like there's so many benefits and you're excluding all of the curses, all of the condemnation, all of God's wrath. Just be on his side and teach your family about the Lord. That's what we need back in our country. Because even the adults are acting like children and have no self-control or really anything. It's We're living in some strange backwards times, I swear. But draw near to God and he'll draw near to you. Be obedient to God and always strive to build that relationship because yes, sometimes we all fall short of the glory of God. Even myself, I have my own struggles and I'll be acting out of my flesh and wanting to do things my way. Maybe when I get triggered or something happens, my flesh will act up and my old self will come back. And a lot of the times that can happen where your old self can pop back up. And you just got to keep yourself in check. You got to start moving different, acting different, being different, being more godly. And that voice won't be as hard to discern because the more invested, the more rooted in God you are, the less the enemy has access to your mind, to your spirit, to your psyche, the less of a factor he will be playing inside of your life. The more rooted in God you are, the harder it is for you to be uprooted. So just stay rooted in God. Get more rooted in God. Get more rooted in the word. Instead of studying captions, studying Instagram reels, going on Facebook, going on YouTube 24-7, listening to prophetic words and some knowledgeable things and insights on life or your future or your past or this or that. Get knowledge about the word. Get insight about the God you serve. Build that relationship and he will make all of your paths straight. For God's eyes are upon the ways of a man, and he sees all his steps. There is no darkness or deep shadow where wrongdoers can conceal themselves. So even if you don't hear God, his eyes are always upon the ways of man. He's seeing what you're doing all the time. So if you want to be disobedient or you slip up, sometimes you may have a disconnect. I don't know if that's biblical because God will never forsake you. But there is weird periods where it's a little harder to discern that voice. And I'm not sure what that is. Listen, I got more on my my journey that I gotta figure out but as for now that's all I have and I appreciate you guys for watching I'll see you in the next one peace